Hi everybody, welcome back to the wonderful Armour of Forger and in this video, I guess updated for 2025, well the fact that I'm recording it in January 2025, um, I want to talk about adding basic mods to your community Armour of Forger server, whether that be for um, Xbox or PC or when they become available on PlayStation. Although this is kind of a, it's a little bit of a misnomer to say Xbox, PC or PlayStation servers. What we have for Armour of Forger is we have cross-play servers. And in this example, we're going to be looking at uh, a Nitrado community server because they're nice and easy uh, to work with. Um, and we're just going to be installing some really basic mods. So for example, I'm on um, Conflict, I'm on Evron, and I've got the Where Am I mod. So if we look at the map and we zoom in, we can see that's me there, which is incredible, incredibly helpful. So when you've got a community server, you're playing with the friends, you know you know where you are. The other mods we've got are better hit effects and better tracers, although saying that I probably haven't got tracers on, in my M16. So really nice basic effects. Now, the thing I have to say before we start is that it's very tempting to look at the workshop in Armour of Forger and you'll see all these wonderful, you know, different tanks, different helicopters, and you'll think, oh yeah, we'll have them when we play Conflict. But it's not quite as simple as just loading in a mod when you want to play, for example, Conflict, with like all the WCFs um, stuff. Often you're going to start off with Game Master. And in fact, what I'm going to do, once you've got used to installing basic mods on your server, and once you've got used to changing the scenario, which I will cover in a different video, what I recommend you do is you go over and you watch my Armour of Forger, how to find out which mods are on a server and create a list for your server. So in effect, what this video tutorial does, this one will tell you how to clone a server. So that if you like the WCS servers, and you like all the modern equipment, and you want to play Conflict in that environment, you can't just download WCS clothing and kind of guess what other mods you should have. You need to look at their server list of all their mods and use all of their mods. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean you'll get the complete picture because there'll be some configs that they use that you won't have access to. But by cloning their server, you can get a very, very simple, a very very similar experience however this this video isn't that complex we're going to be starting off simple so start off with let's have a look at a server and see what it is so we're on nitrado this is armor forward in fact so let me escape out of here so that my um the noise of my pc isn't overwhelming okay so we've got here and we've hired a server and i highly, highly recommend again start very small like with a 10 slot one just hire it for a few days See whether you get on get on with it. And then we'll look at the web interface. And you get to kind of the general um, far, uh, overview here. And then we go into the general settings. And in here what you can do is you can put the name of your server. You'll probably want to put a password unless you want to open it. And you really want to have an admin password. Admin password is very important because that will then give you access to Game Master. So you can change things. And then choose your scenario. Now you'll only have access to vanilla scenarios from this particular drop down for the moment. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go with Conflict on Everon. And then we look at the config files. So you look at the config files and you come up with this file here. And this is the powerhouse where everything that you do to change your server will happen. And this is where we can add the mods. Now, your server, when it's new, will look something like this. There we go. Oh, we didn't mean to do that. Let's uh, be very, very careful. Let's put that bracket back. There we go. So yours will look probably something like that. Um, so depending on the settings you chose from the first section, you'll want to have things like... Make sure there's nothing there. Yeah, so you'll have, want to have crossplay on. So without crossplay, it just means it's just a PC server, and you want to have visibility on so people can see it in the browser. But again, you'll add your password in. So we've got a password there, and we've got our admin password as well. So that will give, give us access to Game Master, and then it fills in the um, uh, conflict on Everon. That's twenty three under store under slash campaign underscore campaign. And then you've got various different settings, but this is the one we're interested in. Cross-platform, true, supported platforms. Uh, oh, cool. So then we've got mods here, like this. So this is where we need to put our mods. 
in between here. Now, I'm going to say it's much easier on PC than it is on PlayStation or Xbox to do this. Uh, because on PC we have some very useful tools that we can use. So on PC all you need to do is you go to the workshop and you find the mod you want and then you go into your mod manager and all you do is you press the play button next to the mod you want on your server and you enable them and they'll appear over here. Then all we do is we click on this little jigsaw here and then we click on JSON and we click on copy to clipboard and then we go over to our um, server and then we just click in between these two square brackets and we control V paste it in. All right. <laughs> uh, in fact, I would probably put space in there so it's like that. Um, and then that's almost ready to go. What I recommend you do though is get rid of the version numbers because what the version numbers do is they force the server to only use those particular versions which is fine when you first do this because it'll be the latest versions but as the versions update your server will always be using an old version which can be good for compatibility but isn't very good for speed in terms of generally when people fire up Reforger they'll download the latest versions of the, that particular mod and then they, you try and join the server and it will tell them to join the older version of it there but there should be a space in there like that um, and then all we do is we, we save the changes and then we restart the server and, and that's it. The, ser the server will automatically download the mods. There's no uploading mods to the server. It will download the correct mods as it wants to, just like that. How easy is that to do? And that's it. <laughs> we, can just, we can just find that. We can just play. Now, if you are on PlayStation or Xbox, the problem is you don't have access to this JSON section here. When you go into mod presets, um, say so you click on... You can be even in the, this bit of the game and you click on there you'll just see presets so you don't get the option to copy stuff because you can't anyway can you because it's in your playstation it's in your xbox but what you've got to do is you've got to use the workshop and i'll put a link to this in the description below this video so there's an online armor reforger workshop that has all the mods in it and when you click on a particular mod for example where am i and go to it and you scroll down it gives you the mod id like that so that's the thing you want and you can copy it there so then what you can do is it if you go to this link as well server config for armor of forging go all the way to the bottom and click on um, show example config this is an example config file and what you're interested in is the format for the mods like that so what you can see here is that's the format you use. So you're going to um, put in the left squiggle bracket. You're going to put in mod ID. And you can copy this. And then the mod ID, that is uh, that number there. And then the name, you can copy that from here. You could copy better traces or you could write in whatever you like. And the version, again, I would recommend don't have the version number. Just do it as um, quotation mark, quotation mark, like that. Now you'll notice that... When you have two more, two or more mods, everything apart from the last mod has a comma after the closing squiggle, squiggle bracket, but the last mod does not have a comma there. And so you're going to have to do that yourself. In fact, I would probably recommend you do that inside a text editor like Notepad++. Get that format correct and then copy it and then go over and then paste it over in the mod section of your config file. Save it and restart and then you'll be good to go so these these extra steps now whenever have you have extra steps there's always chances that you can make a mistake so be very careful when you do stuff you may well find that there's mods that are incompatible with each other as well so if your server doesn't restart and you can't seem to get on it properly then terribly sorry but there's probably an incompatibility there and that's why you should always really um, go into the workshop um, go into your mod manager enable the mods and then go into scenarios and go into say conflict or game master and make sure that it loads up in this section because if it doesn't load here the chances are it's not going to load on your server and, it, and it's a lot more hassle to do it on your do it on your server that way now the other cool thing we can do as well is that once it is working and you go all oh, right that, that's cool what we can do is if you go to config uh, configuration profiles you can actually save this as well so you could say well this was um, 
uh, Everon Everon Conflict Basic Mods. We can create that there. So what that's done, that has now saved that config file. In fact, if we click on Show here, and scroll down, we can see that it's all there. There's all the mods. So there's Where Am I, Better Hit Effects, and Better Tracers. And in fact, if we go to something else, so for example, I sometimes run the WSS, WCS mods on my server, and I got these by going through the process that you see in this video here uh, on how to clone a server. Um, so what I can do is if I say uh, restore like this, are you sure you want to restore it? I can say restore. There we go. And now if I then go to my config file, you'll see that all of the mods for a WS server are now there. And then I could go back to configuration profiles, and I could go back to Everon Conflict Basics mods, I could restore that one. And then go back to config files. And this is now just back to those basic ones. So once you've got a setup for a particular thing you want to do, whether that be Game Master or whether that be Conflict or maybe it be something else, you can save that in the in the configuration profiles and easily come back to it and swap between the different configs very, very easily. So there we go. That is how you have different mods in the basic scenarios. What I will do in another video is I'll show you how to change a scenario, so to put on a custom scenario, so a different game mode, and we'll look at that that way as well. And remember, in the description below this video, you'll find all the links, including the link to my video on how you can clone another server so you can get a version of, say, Conflict um, with all the mods, and they will work together so that things like you'll have say the um, WCF clothing mod it means that when you go into the armory the clothing will be there whereas if you just have the WCF clothing mod by itself when you go to the armory it won't be there because the proper configs aren't in place so there we go hopefully you found this useful if you have hit like if you want to see more of the same press subscribe and of course I'll see you again soon <laughs>